You're listening to The American Scald, a musicology podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to The American Scald podcast. I know, I know, I've been pretty iffy on the release schedule, but between having to grade about 100 midterms for the Norse mythology class at CU Boulder, and getting pretty distracted by Elden Ring, to be honest with all of you, uh, I promise I am back to a proper work ethic. Now, today we are going to be talking about a composer who has somehow evaded serious attention outside of Scandinavia, despite her prolific performing career, her friendship with romantic titan Edvard Grieg, and even her ties to Franz Liszt and Clara Schumann. I'm speaking, of course, of Agatha Becca Grundahl. Born in the town of Holmestrand in 1847 to a family of artists and musicians, it was clear from a very young age that Agatha Becca Grundahl had a gift for and obsession with playing and creating music at the piano. Despite growing up in an art-loving home where every child practiced music and art in some capacity, it was Agatha's musicianship which stood out amongst her other siblings' talents. One of her sisters, renowned painter Harriet Backer, even has an early fond memory she recounted of little Agatha playing her grandmother's piano at only four years old. In 1857, her family moved to Christiania, where Agatha was brought to the attention of our friend from last week, Halfdan Karolf, who proceeded to take young Agatha under his wing. He taught her the finer points of composition, but quickly learned that he could not teach her more than she already knew on the performance side of things, and admitted to her that the domestic environment of Christiania was much too cramped for such a gifted human being. And despite her parents not wanting a performer's life for their daughter for fear of being judged by other bourgeois families, they ultimately sent her to music school in Berlin at the recommendation of Karolf. I believe Agatha's final exchange with Karolf before she left for Berlin was pretty telling of her personality, for with all of Karolf's religious hang-ups of the time, he told her, Go the woman's ordinary way if God is wondering about you and then take the art with you as a wonderful piece of jewelry with which you can light up the world around you, but do not leave this way to become a concert musician. To this, Agatha Becker Grundahl responded, Thank you, but there is something in me that will never give me peace, because I love the art so much that the longing to master it is indescribable. After three fruitful years in Berlin, Agatha returned to Christiania in 1868, where she debuted at the behest of Edvard Grieg, with whom she would remain close friends all her life. He was conducting this concert where she performed his famous piano concerto in a way that pleased and touched Grieg deeply. And the concerto itself was very well received by all who attended, and now it is one of the most popular piano concertos in music history, all because of her debut performance. She would continue to champion this piano concerto all over Europe until the end of her days. Now, interestingly enough, as a composer like Karolf and Grieg, she was far more comfortable with songs and piano pieces than she was with larger scale formats like symphonies and concertos. Some of her finest songs, though they are all remarkable, date from this period in her life. The most popular of which is probably her song Motkveld, or Towards Evening. I want to take a second right now to plug the recordings of her songs a former classmate of mine at Peabody did. Her name is Noelle McMurtry, and if you type in her name with Grundahl's into YouTube, you will find a stunning performance of Grundahl's songs in Peabody Conservatory's Recital Hall. Definitely check it out. I'll be linking it in the show notes. So as we first saw with Karolf, then Grieg, and now with Agatha, for decades now, something about the Norwegian culture, poetry, and way of life absolutely enchanted its composers to write songs that, in my opinion, are far more charming and heartwarming than their German counterparts. Where many German composers towards the time of Agatha and Grieg, such as Schumann, tended to write songs which challenged and prodded the mind and deeper sides of the psyche, the Norwegians were content with writing songs where, above all else, they were meant to soothe the weary soul. Agatha's song Modkveld, and indeed all of Miss Grundel's songs, are no exception. And interestingly enough, just as Grieg and many other Norwegian composers did, she mostly composed her songs specifically for Grieg's wife Nina to sing. I wish there were recordings of her, because it truly seems that everyone and their mother was writing music for Nina Grieg to sing, while Edvard Grieg played the piano. Far and away, however, most of her intrigue was in her piano playing. Indeed, she was one of the most famous piano players in all of Europe, with even the harshest of British critics dubbing her as one of the greatest piano artists of the century. Ola Bull then took notice of her at once, and with a glowing recommendation, she was admitted to study in Florence, Italy, and with Bull's good friend Franz Liszt in Weimar. Here again we see Ola Bull serving as that father figure type role to the generation after him. 
So at this point, you can tell that Agatha was something of a beast when it came to piano playing. For a Norwegian woman to be loved by Grieg, Karolf, Bull, and then sent to study with Franz Freaking List and Weimar, that is not something to take lightly. She was even offered a leadership position at the Peabody Conservatory, my alma mater in Baltimore, Maryland. She turned it down, however, not because it was in Baltimore, as we may all assume, but because she fell in love and married a year later in Norway. What garbage. Married life did not hold her down in any capacity, however, as she led the charge alongside Grieg and Svensson, who we will learn about next week, in the golden age of Norwegian music. This music scene had yet to explode as it would at the turn of the century, and it needed no less than the bold minds, courage, and idealism of these three composers. She performed an insane amount of concerts around Scandinavia, headlining almost always with Grieg's Piano Concerto. Now, Despite growing deaf in her mid-thirties, as is a complete tragedy, she performed this concerto at the very first Bergen Music Festival in 1898. This was a major artistic victory, and for a few more years she delighted audiences with her incredible playing. After giving her last concerts in Sweden and Finland in 1901, she retired to teaching. Now, the saying those who can't do teach rarely applies to anyone at all, but this especially doesn't apply to Miss Grundahl. Her students remembered her for radiating authority. She was strict, but one student defended her, quote, wonderful ability to keep work and to maintain. Unfortunately, Agatha Baca Grundahl became almost completely deaf in both ears towards the end of her life, and died of cancer in June of 1907, just a few months before Grieg would. Now, in his own personal diary, Grieg would write the following in the weeks after her death. Then, this beautiful life ended. Though in his noble pessimism and in all his suffering, no artist's soul has walked cleaner roads. There are few of the Norwegian composers about whom it can be said. If a mimosa, that is a flower, could sing, harmonies would emerge from it as from Agatha Baca Grundl's most beautiful, most intimate performances. The reason this is so powerful to me is that Grieg didn't publicly claim this for the purpose of clout or for public spectacle. He wrote this to himself in his own journal. This, to me, says a thousand words about the impact she left on all who heard her music. Now to me, it's a shame that there's so little written about her, and the people know so little of her work and life. I'm aware that I'm not going to be able to start a revolution or restore her work and reputation to their proper status in this dinky little podcast, but hopefully someday something can be done to remind the world of the majesty and charm of Agatha Baca Grundahl's music. And so friends, that brings us to the end of this episode of the American Scalds Musicology Podcast. Please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and leave a review if listening on a podcast platform, as this helps grow the show immensely. You can also visit me on my website, theamericanscald.com, where you can email me any questions you have about the show or musicology in general, or just learn more about the work that I do. I'd love to hear from you all. Questions, thoughts, ideas, and you can leave these in the comments, email them to me, or direct message me on Instagram at americanscald.nordicsound. Lastly, I hope you join us over at r slash nordicsound, where you can share and discuss all things Nordic music. So, thank you for listening, and I hope to see you on the next episode of the American Scalds Musicology Podcast. Mm -hmm.